This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, it's uh, 10.30 on a Thursday, and uh, I just got called out here, but I just noticed this. This is all wet. I wonder if this unit's iced up coming out of this corner right here that's weird huh so uh 10 30 at night i got an emergency service call they said there was a fire in the building the fire department came out they said that this ac was blowing smoke all downstairs honestly i think it probably blew smoke for a minute <laughs> probably has a bad motor would be my guess fire department was already here they didn't cut the unit open so I take it that uh, they didn't see any fire so let's open it up I don't know it's this unit they just said it was this area in the bar it's a little six ton unit I think but this is the one that is off uh, it doesn't look like the fuses are bad but that doesn't mean anything let me open this guy up I have a hunch that we have a bad motor or something single phased all right, so I get in here. The motor's completely locked up. There's a uh, bunch of plastic right here. It still smells and smoldering. There's still, like, I'm surprised they didn't open it up. Um, the blower wheel's completely disintegrated in there. This thing's still hot. So what I'm gonna do for now, just to be safe, is I'm gonna pull that motor out. There's nothing I can do about it tonight. I just needed to make sure there wasn't still an active problem. So I'm gonna yank that motor out and then uh, cut the belt off and then inspect the rest of the unit. And we'll see if there's any more fire damage. I mean, I think what happened was it just, this locked up, wouldn't turn, locked up the motor and it just went off on overload or, or actually, I don't know. Who knows, something happened, but it caught on fire. I'm, I am dumbfounded. There is, it's still smoldering in here. This up here, It's still actively smoldering in the insulation up in there. I can't believe the fire department didn't even open this unit up. They literally left like 15 minutes ago. Holy moly. That's crazy. Yeah, this thing's torched. Or not torched, but destroyed. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know how... Uh, man, that thing wreaked havoc. It just completely imploded, grenaded on itself. Um, I don't see, yeah, that's interesting. I don't see anything here. You think that there would have been damage here, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to put the unit back together. Um, Open up just the rest of the unit, open up the filters. We'll get those pulled out because they're gonna smell. Um, I don't think it was like a big flame. I think that the motor, but I don't know why the motor didn't go off on overload. This is an OEM motor, so it still should have an overload inside of it. Something happened there. Interesting. But it's, it's weird though, because I still see like smoke. It's hard, like I can't explain it to you, but it's just, it's coming, like I can see it. I mean, some of it's dust that I'm seeing, but it, it, yeah, interesting, huh, okay, well, it's probably just like dust and crap, just smells like smoke, maybe, anyways, dang it, man, I, I had literally just fallen asleep, too, when my phone rang, <laughs> nothing else really crazy going on, the filters, though, oh my gosh, they smell like smoke, all the insulation in this unit, even in the return air side over here, smells like smoke bad, so it had a good little puff, of smoke coming through here manager said for like three or four minutes they had solid smoke in the the dining room so it's just enough for that motor to melt and then it must it probably blew the breaker trip the breaker or something like that when it's single phase but i mean you can still see moisture in the drain pan so it was running up until it grenaded on itself um is what happens when you don't do maintenance right they're not doing routine maintenance so craziness um, 
Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave all the panels open. I'm gonna let the unit air out. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get the smoke smell out of this or not. I don't see anything active going on. Um, I'm just gonna leave all the panels off. I'll put this one on, but I mean, it's really not gonna make a difference. It's not moisture proof. I'll just leave everything off, screw that. Um, let it air out in here. And uh, we'll change all the filters in the building. I'll talk to the customer regardless of whether or not they have me fix this or not. I don't know what they're gonna do. It can be fixed. I can get a blower assembly for it in a motor. I just worry about the insulation. I don't know how well the smoke's going to come out of that insulation or what's going to happen, but oh well. But uh, yeah, so what I at a minimum, all new filters for the building. This disconnect is really janky. Like when I pulled the fuses out, the whole thing is just coming apart. So I'll put a disconnect in my quote. Um, blower motor, new improved carrier blower bracket. Blower assembly complete. They that's I believe the six tons and below you can get a complete blower assembly already built. So I'll do a blower assembly complete. Um, the inside of the unit, I don't see stress cracks. I was looking at that when I first opened it up. Those look fine. Oh no, there is a stress crack right there. Oh look at that. Yeah, lovely. I can fix that. I've done them before. But yeah, that's interesting. Let's see if I can talk them into a new unit. They really need to. This thing's a piece of junk carrier R22 fixed orifice metering device. I mean, I don't mind the carrier thing. I should just say it's just a piece of junk old R22 unit. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm just babbling at this point. I'm going to go home and go to bed and I'll talk to the customer in the morning. I'm just walking around, just inspecting all their other ACs. And I come over here. This one's iced up. Don't know if you guys can see that, but the suction line's totally iced up on this guy. So, don't know if you guys saw that or not. That one's iced up. I bet you the filters are dirty. This place is a mess. It's sad, man. We used to do monthly maintenances here. This restaurants were in decent shape. Besides needing some upgrades for equipment, that was it. And it's sad to see equipment go to the wayside or whatever you want to say that's how it goes though all right well i'm gonna inspect this kitchen ac that i saw when i was walking up because i saw water coming out onto the floor in a weird place i'm gonna check that out real quick yeah that's odd there shouldn't be water right here because it doesn't look like it's tracking from all the way over here uh i don't know maybe maybe it is tracking looks just condensation Unless this is iced up too. Uh, I'm gonna pull this off and have a look. Eh, it's just dirty filters. Look at the filter line. Carriers don't do a good job of having a separation right there for the filters. But it's not overflowing or anything. It's just dirty in this unit. Look at all the lens and everything. All right, well, that's it. I'm out of here for tonight. All right, it's the next morning. I'm back. Really wasn't that big of a deal. I really wish they changed this unit, but I know they're gonna want me to repair it. Only problem, really, I came in here, I wanted to see if the smoke, it, it doesn't smell as strong as smoke anymore. Um, I mean, it doesn't really look like, it, it looks like the little fire that happened in the motor really was just contained in the motor. I don't think it really left. I mean, maybe, yeah, there was a little something happening right there from the heat. Um, but really it was just all internal in the motor and it just melted all the plastic. There's a big plastic guard right here. Um, and it's completely gone. I can see inside there, all the wires, the insulation's gone. So, and it was all caused more than likely because this blower assembly grenaded, completely came apart. It locked up and then the motor locked up and overcurrent didn't shut it off or something. I don't know, eventually overcurrent shut it off, but crazy. But yeah, so basically today, I just wanted to kind of assess what was going on in the daylight and I'm gonna change all their AC filters on everything because it still smells like smoke. I walked through the building and in their kitchen, it smells like smoke. So I'm gonna change all those filters and then uh, put the panels on because we're gonna get rain this weekend. I don't think this is gonna get fixed today. 
and uh, we'll see. I got to start. I got to get back to the office and start making calls to see if I can get a blower assembly, the motor, the bracket. You know, luckily it's not a crazy hot weekend. It's supposed to be kind of rainy and cold, so it won't be too bad. It's crazy. The more you look at this blower wheel and look at this motor, man, it just all the plastic. That's crazy. Pretty cool. I think that it definitely caught fire, but I think that, uh, you know, it was pretty contained because I don't think that this insulation is going to just ignite, but you definitely see that there, and this reeks really bad of smoke, but it was definitely hot, you know, right in that area. Last night when I was here, there was an AC that I said was iced up. It's this one. The ice has gone away in the off cycle, but now it's frosting up like it has plugged up metering devices. Hard for you guys to see, but yeah, it's all clear now, but you can clearly tell it's been icing up for a while because the filters have massive water damage. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a fixed orifice metering device that's plugged up or possibly a low charge. I have them putting in a work order. I don't know if I'm gonna to get to that today. I'll probably save that for one of my guys. This AC but. is severely impacted. This is the one for the kitchen. It had the giant line down the middle. Well, it was worse than I thought. Once I got in there, it was really impacted with grease. And you can see like this is all grease too. It's really thick nastiness. So unfortunately, I had to use the Viper Venom Pack. Now when I say unfortunately, because this is not meant for evaporators, but when a customer doesn't do maintenance and it's severely impacted, you got to do what you got to do. So I'm using their foam sprayer. This thing is awesome when you uh, fill it up right and pump it up. If you guys didn't already pick one of these up. Now it's not meant for, I mean, you can only put so much in it, but check this out. Like awesome. It foams right up. It's like using the aerosol cleaner. Big old chunkers of grease are coming out the drain. That milky white concoction. It's unfortunate that we got to do this kind of stuff, but you know, when they don't do maintenance and it gets severely impacted. It's sad too, because this AC is probably only four years old. But you know, this is what happens. It's not too bad. It turned out pretty good. I'm not worried about the shininess of it. I'm more worried about the grease being gone and drain pan being clear. So I made sure I rinsed out the drain pan. It's looking pretty good. Give it a couple more rinses, then we're gonna put some of the uh, evaporator coil cleaner on it. Uh, and that should help with the smell a little bit. Uh, somewhere in here, yeah. We've got this one, the Venom Pack Evap Cleaner. So we're gonna put that on every AC to try to eliminate the smoke smell in the building as best as possible. All right, I went ahead and I rinsed every evaporator, put all new filters in every unit, um, cleaned the evaporators with Evap Cleaner. Uh, the building balance was off, so I cleaned the makeup air filters and then also tighten up the belt. All the ACs are operating. I got them to create a work order for that far AC over there that was iced up. I'll send another technician, but big picture stuff, right? Can you guys hear that sound? To me, it sounds like we got bad bearings. So let's go ahead and shut it down. And I'm gonna pull this belt off. Whew. You're not supposed to stretch belts, but pulled that belt off okay we're gonna turn it back on and we're gonna see if the problem lies in the motor or the belt now that motor bracket is severely bent too the brackets bent but the motor mount is bent also um, we'll wait for it to start back up but yeah we want to hear that motor run and see if the bearing sound so yeah it's not following we got bad bearings in this too and again this is probably what led to the problem on that was the bearings locked up the blower wheel whatever happened um we need to change this blower assembly before we uh have that same problem with this unit now you can change bearings but these blower assemblies are super cheap and super super easy to replace and they're complete you just order a blower assembly like 600 bucks or something like that. The amount of time and uh, effort it's gonna take to change both of those bearings, pulleys, all that stuff, it's not even worth it. So I'm gonna put the belt back on. This one's running, but I'm gonna talk to the customer and quote a new blower assembly. And we'll go ahead and quote bracket and a motor on this one too, because I can tell that the motor itself, the mounts are bent from being tightened. Um, it's just an old unit. So war again big picture stuff here, right? Like I predicted they chose to repair. So here we go 
We've got a new blower assembly, pulleys, blower motor, blower motor bracket, and blower deck. I never knew they sold the blower deck till someone in my comments told me. You know the downside is that unless you have like tech documents to look at, the manufacturer, like when you call their rep, for me it's Sigler's, that's who sells my stuff for Carrier, those guys don't know. When I say I need the metal that the blower sits on, they're like, eh, I don't know, you know? Uh, the way I found it was I actually went on their website, logged in with my credentials, and I was able to download, or I think I did that, or maybe I did it through the Carrier Service Technician app. But anyways, regardless, I downloaded the manual for the unit and was able to see that that was a replaceable part, and then I checked stock, and they actually had it. It was a couple hundred bucks. Eh, it's better than trying to solder that little crack and hope it doesn't come back. So, we are going to rip this guy a new one. We're going to shut it off. Well, it's already shut off. Pull the top off and uh, go to town trying to rebuild this bad boy. When it comes to the electrical for the motor, what we're gonna do is it's a 208, 4, 460 system. So you can go 208, 230, or 460. So you've got low voltage and high voltage. We're using low voltage. So four, five, and six get wire nutted together. Nine and three go to a line. Eight and two go to a line. And seven and one go to a line. And that's how I have it hooked up right here. All set up using Wagos. We're going to push them back in. We'll pull this tight and get the motor mounted on. We are put back together. Um, it is really polishing a turd with these blower assemblies. Even with all the new metal and everything, 
nothing lines up. I've said it before and I know people pushed back. That bracket is stupid. There's too many pivot points on that bracket to get that motor and everything straight. I realized, you know, the last time I said it, it was hard to tighten up. I realized people said to put screws, drivers in here and pry back. I get that, that makes sense. But it's still almost impossible to get that motor perfectly straight. I appreciate the rigidity of the new bracket because it doesn't flex, but getting, there's too many pivot points. It's just dumb. This needs to be, they should leave the pivoting to the, the motor bolts and then that would be easier, but there's too many things that pivot. But regardless, got it on there. Everything aligned, it spins, tensioned up, we're good. I need to take note of the RLA for the motor and then we're gonna bump it real quick just to check phase rotation. So I have G jumped out. Okay, why didn't the blower... Hmm, that's interesting. I would've thought the blower motor would've started first. That's odd. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. So, blower rotation is correct. Now, for now, I put this panel in there so we can blow out any dust and stuff. And then we'll put the panel on and we'll check uh, uh, current draw to make sure we're not over amping. We are allowed to run 5.2 amps. Let's see what it does. And we're slightly over current. We're at 5.9 with the panel on. So we need to go ahead and um, uh, slow the motor down a little bit. Spin it a little too fast. All right. We're running at 4.2 amps, so we're gonna check the ops of the unit, see how it's doing, and then proceed from there. So I'm gonna go get probed up on this guy. This guy is back together. It's been running for about 10 minutes or so. Um, let's have a look at what my probes are telling me. So I'm all probed up on it, and uh, superheat's still kind of stabilizing out. We're at about 18 degrees. I think we're calling for about five degrees, okay? Um, pressures, I don't see any problems. Got a 35 degree evaporator temperature. There's not a very big load in the building because I have it uh, um, jumped out. It was satisfied. Eight degrees subcooling, that's true subcooling. I like that number. Uh, it's about 98 degrees outside. Return air dry bulb is 71 degrees. So you can see there's not very much of a load inside the building. Uh, Airflow is not too bad. Uh, calling for about 2400 CFMs or right there. Temperature splits, not too bad. Delivered capacity, we're right on the money, 57,000 BTUs. Guys, this guy's kicking butt. I don't think, I mean, you know, when I was out here that night, I could tell that the cooling had literally just shut off because there was condensate in the drain pan. Um, this guy just lost a blower motor, so I don't see anything wrong refrigeration-wise. Um, customer doesn't do routine maintenance, so in this case, when I see a dirty heat exchanger like that, I just shut it off. Uh, that needs to be PM'd and gone through before it can fire up. So the customer can either place a service call or have us do a full PM. Uh, I wanted to do other repairs to the building besides just changing filters and cleaning evaporators and they didn't want me to. They just want me to get it going, get it operational. So that's what I did. Unit is as good as possible. They'll get another few years out of it. And uh, you know, I tried to get them to change it but they didn't want to, but that's okay. You know, it's their money, I don't mind it. It's work for me. So, all right, well, that's it on this one. We're gonna give them the keys and uh, tell them to keep an eye on it. This was a uh, frustrating evening call. I was literally went to bed early that night and just fell asleep and then my phone rang to the point that when, the, when I got on the phone with the manager, the manager was like talking to me and I'm like, what time is it? And he's like, it's 11 or 10 or I don't know whatever time it was, but I said it in the video, but I was like, oh, oh okay. Like I had just like falling into that whatever sleep and so anyways i got out there i was really blown away that the fire department didn't open that ac up i would imagine that maybe they use one of those fancy high dollar thermal imaging cameras um, because you know one would think that they had to like make sure there wasn't anything still going on right but i was still blown away because that motor was so hot like i could barely touch it when i first opened it up so that kind of blew my mind but regardless um, you know, I presented the customer with all the facts, all the information, um, and they chose to repair the unit, but I went ahead and talked to them and told them about the other unit that has bad bearings. They declined fixing the other unit that had bad bearings because it wasn't a problem yet. Okay. Right. Here's your sign kind of a thing. But regardless, um, I went ahead and changed all the filters in the building. I cleaned all the evaporators. 
got rid of the smoke smell as much as possible. I aired out the unit. Um, the insulation didn't smell too bad. There was still a slight smoky smell when I turned this unit back on once I got it all done. But um, that was this last, I think it was Friday. I think I fixed this on Friday. Today, did I do it Friday? I think so, yeah. Uh, today's October 7th. It was October 6th that I did the repair. So um, my brain is so like mushy right now with just all the stuff going on at work. But um, we got them back up and running. Everything was good on the unit. I mean, ops wise, refrigeration wise, it was great. It was just the blower assembly, that blower deck. Um, I was surprised I can get that blower deck. Uh, that was cool. Someone, the last time I did one of these, someone in the comments had mentioned that they had bought one of those. So that kind of got me thinking, you know, I tried talking to the supply house and they were like, uh, yeah, I don't know, you know, and I was able to get a schematic breakdown to where I can actually look and see that's the part that I need. And they actually had it in stock. Go figure, right? So we basically rebuilt this unit. Now, again, I give the customer all the information, right? And I just let them make the decisions. But the crazy thing is that this unit got a new compressor, new evaporator earlier in the year. I didn't do it on video. I had some of my other technicians do it. But we put a whole evaporator in this unit because I had plugged up metering devices. And we put a new compressor, changed the refrigerant over, um, or no, we didn't change the refrigerant over, but anyways, we put the unit back together and you know, so they've spent a lot of money on this unit and I tried to tell them like, Hey, but you know, the price of equipment right now is pretty darn high and, uh, you know, they opted for a repair. So, Hey, I don't mind doing it. Right. I gives me some work to do and you know, I kind of have fun rebuilding these things. So that's what we did. We rebuilt it, uh, put the unit back together, did the best that I could and all is well. So I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available on there. It's a great way to support the channel. Hats, beanies, sweaters, zip up hoodies, all that good stuff. So check it out again, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, that's, that's one of the easy ways to support the channel, but the easiest way to support the channel is literally just watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. Uh, you can also support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. There's links in the show notes. And last but not least, via truetechtools.com. If you go to truetechtools.com, you find some tools you want at checkout. If you use my offer code big picture, big picture one word, uh, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website. Not everything, but a good majority of them. I get a small commission when you do that. It's a win-win. All right. So again, Thank you so very much. I really do appreciate you and uh, we will catch you on the next one.